Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about Azure Kubernetes service architecture. So in AKS or in Kubernetes generally, we know there are two major components. The first one is called a master control plane or control plane and another one called a worker node where our application runs. So these are the two major components. So as per this particular architecture of AKS, we are going to discuss first about control plane. So the blue part you can see here, this is a control plane of AKS or master controller. This master controller or control plane have five major components. The first one is API server. The another one we have scheduler. Then we have a controller manager. The fourth one we have your cloud controller manager and the last we have ATCD. So let's understand each of the component individually. So first we will see about API server. So API server basically is the entry point for your AKS cluster because whenever you create a AKS cluster, it will expose through to the public. If you are using public or otherwise, if you're using private AKS cluster, then it will expose through the private endpoint. So this is the basically entry point for your AKS cluster API server. The next component here, we have a scheduler. So scheduler basically is responsible to schedule your this configuration like if you want a uh, applic if you want to deploy your application then scheduler is responsible to identify on which node it has to deploy where it, it will identify okay on this particular worker node we have sufficient space or uh, minimum workload on that base basic basic it will schedule the application deployment on your worker node so scheduler is responsible for that purpose Another one we have a controller manager. So controller manager is always responsible for desired state configuration. What does what does it mean basically? So for example, in your ML configuration file, you have defined I want three replicas of my application. Then controller manager is responsible that always three replica three instance of your application should always run between or inside the virtual worker node and the another one we have a cloud controller manager so cloud controller manager is responsible for creating the resources on azure cloud for example if you want to uh, create a storage account then this is the one cloud controller manager is responsible to create the resources for you because it access the azure cloud api and the last one we have here is etcd so etcd is a it's kind of a database where it is to like key and value format it store the data so microsoft is always have three replica of, of this particular database if something goes wrong with one replica it will automatically take another one so we can simply understand suppose either cluster admin or a DevOps pipeline is trying to deploy something on this AKS cluster. Then they always have to write some kind of ML file or they have to use kubectl command to create a resources in your AKS. So this particular ML file is always stored in the etcd configuration, uh, etcd database. So based on this configuration, AKS cluster create your resources or your pod or services inside the worker node so this this is the purpose of etcd database now i leave this part vnet here for time being let's understand the worker node so the worker node is basically responsible to run your application it's if it's a it's basically worker node whenever you create a aks cluster it always create a worker node inside the virtual machine scale sets so it's a group of virtual machines basically. So on each worker node, we have all these components like container, it's a runtime run time, uh, requirement like Docker basically. So it can run your uh, container. Next we have a kubectl, sorry, kubelet. So kubelet is, we can easily understand like something called, if you have to push your image from ACR as your container registry and that is the purpose of kubectl and another one here we have kubeproxy so kubeproxy is basically help us to to communicate between the pods suppose for this pod wants to connect to this pod so it will 
help us to create the communication between the pods and another one we call here we have a services so services is basically uh, if you want to expose your application through your public IP which where basically which uh, is, which is useful uh, which is which is basically with the help of service we can uh, expose our application to the on a public internet so ingress and services are used for that purpose so the same components we have in uh, both the worker node as i explained let's talk about this virtual network so suppose if you are creating a public EKS cluster then you don't need to create a virtual network because this api server will have a public ip address so this particular worker node can communicate to this api server through the public ip addresses if we are creating a private aks cluster in that case how this worker node will communicate to aks because as i told a worker node is always created inside the virtual machine scale sets that is a different service itself in AK, uh, in azure so there should be a communication between those so this configuration or the scheduler and control manager can do their work so to, to create a if we are creating a private endpoint then we need a virtual vnet so we can communicate through with the help of vnet to this particular worker node because this will be part of say virtual network so whenever you create a private endpoint it will create a something called a private dns shown and there you have created basically you link your virtual network so it can access the resources inside the worker node and all, all obviously some kind of authentication you need so managed identity or service principles you can use for that purpose and by default azure uh, aks create a load balancer for you so but it's an ideal practice it's a good practice if you create if you are deploying your application or aks you always create a services or something called ingress controller and ingress whenever you create an ingress controller that means the public ip addresses will be assigned to this object and that public ip addresses you can link through the load balancer now you got the public ip address to access your application but in real world we don't use public ip address so we need some kind of uh, azure dns so for that purpose like if you have to define any domain name of your application then for that you have you can use public uh, azure uh, uh, azure dns servers so it can resolve your ip addresses with the domain name and end user can access it so this is the uh, major part of aks so i think i have covered uh, most of the things here so i think okay that's all for today see you in next video thank you so much